So what in the world are we doing here with these systems of equations? Well, when you just have two equations and two unknowns, there's a really nice graphical interpretation. You can just solve each of the equations for y and interpret each equation graphically as a line. So I've drawn out a set of axes here and labeling these as we do. Let's graph out these equations one by one. So the first one is going to have a y-intercept of minus 4. So let's see here. That's going to be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. And then it will have an x-intercept of 2. And so, bear with me here it will roughly look something like this. There we go. Now, that's equation one. It's that line. Equation two now, y-intercept is four, Good, I should be labeling these points. 2, comma, 0, and this will be uh, 0, comma, 4, being the y-intercept. And then I believe you'll find that the x-intercept is 6. So if this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, means this should intersect about here. So, something like this, and I can already tell my drawing is crap, but we'll just deal with it. That's what you get taking a math class from a math person, not an art person. What's this intersection here? This intersection of these two lines? Well, you can work it out, and it should be, though it isn't in this picture, it should be the point 3, 2. And if you check, that's going to be the solution to this system's of equation. That when x equals 3 and y equals 2, this system of equations will be true at this particular point. So solving these two by two systems, we end up finding the intersection of two lines. But it's not always the case that any two lines intersect. Normally, if you randomly pick two lines, yeah, they'll intersect. But on extremely rare occasions, you could get parallel lines. What happens in this case? Well, in this case, there is no intersection. So, your system of equations will have no solution. You could see that in something like x plus y equals 1 and x plus y equals 2. Now here we have something being 1, and yet at the same time, this same something is equal to 2. Well, that can't happen. You know, this is a rather obvious example. but demonstrates the idea of, yeah, you could come up with a system that has no solution. You can have two lines that are parallel. 
there's an even weirder case. Where the two lines lie right on top of each other. two overlapping lines. So, in this case, where do the two lines that sit on top of one another, where do they cross each other? Well, everywhere. There are infinitely many intersections. It's not quite right to say that they intersect everywhere because they don't intersect here or here. They will intersect everywhere on the line. But this gets us to the point of infinitely many intersections. So that means there are infinitely many solutions. And something in this case, I'm going to do another really dumb example, would be something like x plus y equals 1 and x plus y equals 1. You know, okay, you're telling me that x plus y equals 1. Now you tell me that x plus y equals 1. Well, yeah, no kidding. You already told me this. This is redundant information. Now, granted, it's not always presented to you in this format. Often you'll see it as something like this, where 2x plus 2y equals 2. Now it's, well, gee, how'd you get that? Well, you just doubled the left-hand side and then doubled the right-hand side. That telling me one of these pieces of information, I can conclude the other. There's nothing new here. And so long as there's nothing funny going on, there's no squareds or x's and y's aren't multiplying each other, these are the only situations you can get into you will either have one intersection point and therefore one and only one solution. You will have no intersection points and therefore no solution. Or you will have infinitely many intersection points and infinitely many solutions. If you add weird stuff in here like squareds and x times y's and you know other weird stuff like that, then you can have two solutions or three solutions or you know, weird stuff like that. But otherwise, if it's all nice and what we call linear, it's either zero, one, or infinitely many. And the name we give these is that this system here we call independent. That might make a bit more sense if we give a name to this rather weird scenario of the two lines sitting on top of one another. We call this dependent in the sense that I got a lot of solutions. Which one do you want to pick? You know, the solution I give you depends upon which solution you want because I've got a whole line full of solutions. Whereas here, you don't get the choice of which solution you'd like to have. There's only one of them. You've got to take it or leave it. And in this scenario, where there is no intersection, we call this inconsistent. Inconsistent is a, kind of an analogy for uh, contradictory or paradoxical, something that cannot happen. 
which makes sense in this case. You know, we are asking, where do two parallel lines intersect? Well, they never intersect. So this is a nonsensical question. You know, you're asking me to do, to solve a problem that has no solution. So the problem is, as we call it, inconsistent. And we'll see a number of these in the example video. I just wanted to detail out what these things actually were, what their names are, and you know, give you a few graphical and algebraic examples of these.